Hi there, and welcome to the Lead Hound Podcast. My name is Megan Ritchie, and I'm the host. And today I thought we'd talk a little bit about facing challenges in your business and uh, feeling like you're stuck on things. So this, I think this is pretty common for basically all all small businesses, all entrepreneurs. Uh, there's definitely many times where we face different challenges, and it's not obvious which is the best way forward. So sometimes we can't even figure out what the way forward is. Uh, You know, maybe you're facing something very challenging. Um, Our recent lockdowns have been a good example of that. I don't think anybody saw that coming and uh, not obvious how to deal with that, I guess, especially, let's say, people in the restaurant industry or something like that where you're not able to open. So, uh, you know, many of us here aren't in that position, aren't in that business, but... um, certainly has had an impact on everybody. So, uh, you know, some things, if the government's forcing you to shut down your business, uh, not always a lot you can do about that. But otherwise, um, you know, I think that's both the great challenge and the great fun of being an entrepreneur is is sort of getting to be creative and think outside the box and try and, and solve the puzzle of whatever problem it is that you're facing. So having said that, I think it's valuable to maybe address how to solve uh, those problems. So, um, you know, often whatever problem you're faced with, maybe you've come up with four or five alternatives, things you can test or try to overcome whatever that problem is, and it's not always clear what the best way forward is. So today I thought I'd just share maybe two two little insights that I have that have really helped me when I've been in those situations. So um, the first suggestion would be to look at uh, what your goal is. And so um, I think this one is maybe best explained uh, by way of example, but I had I had an online store where we sold dog training equipment, specialty for sporting for sporting dog classes and sports like agility and things like that. So I had an online store for that and I opened it, I think it's a year, maybe we're just coming up on two years. So um, have kind of been played around with it a bunch last year. Um, definitely saw some success, but uh, was faced with a few different challenges. So advertising was certainly one of them, which is kind of one of the reasons I got into all this marketing stuff. But I was faced with the challenge. So it was looking more and more to me like if I was going to continue to use advertising to grow the business, I was going to have to... Um, offer some sort of training, which I I had done a little bit um, through a YouTube page and as well as through some special packages I'd put together. But it was looking like more and more I would have to include some sort of training, either maybe as sort of an upsell. So say somebody buys some Frisbees and then they can take an online Frisbee class to teach their dog how to play. And I just found that that was not particularly up my wheelhouse. I'm not a dog trainer. So that wasn't particularly in my wheelhouse, wasn't something I was super strong at, and nor did I particularly, I guess, want to become strong in it. So I enjoy playing it with my own dogs, but I'm not huge in competing in in the various sports. I do do it um, kind of recreationally when time allows, but I'm not nearly as dedicated as some of the others. And nor did I really want to give up my weekends to, to really focus and do that. I, I enjoy it when I can, but it's not something I'm... Uh, super eager to do every weekend, I'll say. So looking at that business, it just looked like every way forward that I saw, um, one for one thing was not feeding into my strengths. And for another was that business was sort of taking my focus and attention away for, from some other businesses that I'd started that I, I felt I was more that were more in my wheelhouse. So they were a little bit more up my alley. I saw a clear way forward for them. And um, so I was already starting to lean that way. And then sort of again, thinking of, you know, what's my goal with this? And I realized that my goal when I started that store, I really didn't have any intentions that it would kind of replace my salary at least anytime soon, or that it would become a full-time job. It was just kind of something I thought was missing in the local market. And I thought maybe I could have some fun and and uh, make a go of it sort of locally, help some other friends out and things like that, that were also having trouble sourcing kind of quality training equipment. So 
have gone from that to just kind of, oh, this is just going to be sort of a, a hobby business to now wanting it to take over my as my main source of income. Um, I guess those two goals just weren't congruent. So my goals had changed and therefore my plan had to kind of change. So for me, that was one of the reasons I shut down the dog training equipment um, shop. And again, I just think that's kind of an easy way to explain it. So I think sometimes we think of goals and it's like, oh, well, I want to hit this money target or I want to compete at this level or I want to do this or I want to do that. And often it's more like, what's the reason behind that? So, you know, it sure, a money target is good, but what does that money get you? What life does it get you? Does the extra money give you more time to spend with your family, uh, more time to do other things you enjoy? So like, yes, maybe you can figure out a way to increase your income, but if it's going to keep you so busy that you never have time to go camping, which is what you wanted the money for, you know, then maybe we're not on the right path here. So Anyway, I just find that that's a, a kind of a helpful illustration um, when you're evaluating different options when you are stuck on a particular problem. So I hope that helps. Or, and then the other solution um, I kind of look at really is getting customer feedback. So we d have done this uh, recently with our dog, my dog sledding um, club. And uh, my co-founder and I were kind of at odds with what we should do. We have a um, challenge program um, without going into all the details. We have various challenges that run uh, congruently and and members can enter one, you know, zero, I guess. They don't have to enter any of them or as many as they want, kind of based on however many we're offering in a month. And we were faced with the question of should we allow people to log um, their run miles um, just with one challenge or across multiple challenges and both of us were sort of at odds um, initially and we kind of got on the same page um, but still weren't really sure what the best way forward was whether we were really considering all the options so we decided um, to take it to the members and just say hey you know we're looking at this option what's your preference would you like to be able to count them on multiple challenges or just one at a time what do you think is more fair um, what's more meaningful to you, what makes sense. And um, a lot of our members came back um, kind of at odds as well, but the majority um, was in favor of doing it across multiple titles. So sometimes I think, you know, there's not always a clear answer. And sometimes, you know, throwing it back to your customers and asking them their opinion is helpful. And I think they also appreciate just feeling like they have a say. I think so many of our best customers feel like, they almost own a little bit of your company as well. Um, and I'm sure you have many, many customers and clients that are like that too. You know, they're big cheerleaders for you, for your business. And, you know, they might not feel like they have a monetary position in it, but they definitely are invested in your success. So sometimes even just letting them have their say and uh, feel like they can help guide the business to a better place um, can be beneficial for multiple reasons. So Anyway, I uh, I just wanted to pop in and mention that um, I think we all hit those problems probably weekly, if not daily. And sometimes, you know, there's a clear, clear strategy and a clear way to move forward. And other times you're kind of hit with that proverbial fork in the road and, you know, maybe you have multiple choices in front of you. And it's not always clear which is the best one. So those are the two things that have helped me the most. And I hope that helps you a little bit. If you're facing that problem, um, again, just thinking, you know, what what is the end goal with all of this, whether that's for your business or um, sort of a personal goal that you're working towards sort of within your business. Like I said, you know, if it's financial, it's probably not only financial, um, you know, it might be you're sick and tired of teaching classes at night. So like, yes, you'd like more money, but you'd also not you'd like to have your evenings back again a little bit. So, you know, sometimes there's more more than just what's obvious in front of us at play. So looking at, uh, at the larger goal can be helpful. And again, just asking your customers if you've got two problems and you're really, or sorry, two solutions and you're really having a hard time deciding which one is right for you and your business. Um, sometimes our customers really have the best insight into our, into our company. So uh, don't be afraid to go to them and ask them as well. Uh, so with that, thank you for tuning in and I will catch up with you guys next week.